I had an experience preparing for this time with, to be with you last week. I was sitting out in my chair watching the Mets play, actually. And uh, I'm really kind of hoping for a New York series there, but we'll see what happens. And as I was sitting there, Cheryl walked out and said, you know, we're going to King of Kings. Know what you're going to do. Because <laughs> most of the time I try to know what I'm doing, but it doesn't always work out that way. Uh, and so she went and did her thing, and I was sitting there. I turned the volume off the TV, so every now and then if I wanted to look at the score, I could see it. And I just started thinking about different scriptures that God was speaking to me and how could I put together something that would be palatable for you and entertaining for you and revelatory for you? And what happened to me was a wave of trauma hit me to where I almost started weeping. And I'm, I'm really not a weeper. I mean, I, I do cry easier than I used to, but, you know, when old Yeller gets shot, I, I cry and I know he's going to get shot. But I, I, I felt this pressure hit me. And I feel like the Lord wants us to deal with that today. It's a spirit of trauma. And I, I know my friend is not here, but he's not the only one that has left us. And I know many of you have suffered trauma. In fact, somebody just brought up a 10-year-old trauma today. So I know I'm in the place where I'm supposed to be right now. To, to break off this trauma so we can move effectively into the new season. You know, if you have a broken leg, it's hard to move forward effectively. If you have a chain on you, if you have, Lazarus had to be set free when he came out of the, the, the grave. These things happen to us. I don't know why they happen. I really don't. I, we, we just went through a seven-year trauma with my son. It's over now, and, and it, it's really well over and uh but it wasn't difficult i had to lay there at night and say my son's in puerto rico he used to lead worship for us every sunday why because of unjust things and then you go through a period where you're aggravated you go through a period where you're depressed then you go back to aggravation again it's a cycle that you go am i the only one that's lived through this this is real you know, when I read, I read the Bible about Israel, Israel went through cycles just like we're going through. Some of it was their fault. Some of it was our fault. God doesn't kill us because we make a mistake. He shows us our mistake and then he brings us back into fullness and wholeness. You know, that scripture, I didn't know Cheryl was going to read Matthew 11, the violent Kingdom of heaven suffers violence. And the vi you know, for 30 years, that was preached to me that violent people hurt Christians. I'll, I'll tell us the truth. Violent take it. Violent take Christian. Violence beating this one. Violence boiling that one. I mean, read them. They're all right. It, that's not what it means. The violent take the kingdom of heaven into the earth realm by force. That's us. That's these people. If you want to know why I'm associated with King of Kings and Trisha and Peter all these years, it's because of that. They were this. I'm looking for warriors. I'm not looking for kumbayas. We are way past the kumbaya season. In fact, when I was in Eastern Europe, I brought this back. That was a long time ago, wasn't it? Why? I, you know, it's a miracle I got it through the airport. I didn't know that this was called a weapon. I thought it was a neat little old antique. But a friend of ours came through Canada, and they got arrested for having one of these in their suitcase. But this, to me, way back then, symbolized King of Kings to me. They're a hammer in this area. They're a hammer in this atmosphere. They're a hammer in this part of the kingdom of God in New Jersey. 25 years we've banded together. And Trisha didn't kill me. Came close a couple times. <laughs> no, 
But every now and then, you got to get around violent people. People who have said, wait a minute, this far and no more. I've had enough of your stuff. I've had enough of you putting perversion into grade schools. All kind of stuff going on. You know what? In fact, sometimes it's say, ain't it awful? Instead of picking up our weapons. Well, that's my phrase for you, hon. <laughs> it is. It's scripture. The first thing I want to ask you is, do you believe what the Bible says? Do you believe it can actually be real? They're not fairy tales, right? They're not stories that sound good. It's reality. It's more of a reality than what you've lived in the past 50, 60, whatever years. And do you believe it could happen today? So I'm not going to go into it. Cheryl did a great job. I, I want to do something. So we're going to do something today. I'm on an arrow kick. If you want to buy a hot stock tip, Buy, buy stock and arrow companies. I did this at Glory Zion, and I think there's people in 160 countries buying arrows now. In 2 Kings, when Elijah told the king to strike the arrows, got mad at him, didn't he? Why did he get mad at him? Because he didn't really believe his action would accomplish anything in the natural. He wasn't violent. Here, hand me my arrows now. Boy, that's dangerous, me putting them in your hands. I can tell you that right now. That's what he did. Elijah went nuts. It's the last thing Elijah did before he left. I don't say people died. Peter Roselli is not dead. He's more alive than you and me. I miss him. I already asked the Lord to tell him to go scout out some fishing places for me because the first thing I'm going to do when I get up there and see some relatives that have gone, I'm going fishing with Peter Roselli. We've been out in the ocean a couple times. He loves, I, I don't like fishing. I went because I like to watch him fish and Dave Bernicke. They love it. Me, I like to sit down and go, give me the, give me the, give me the salmon. I, I don't like to go stand there all day and not catch anything sometimes. That's just me. But other guys love it. So I like, I like watching them. Boy, if you'd have hit that thing right, if you'd have done it seven times and you'd have put your faith behind that thing, all of your enemies would be subdued. Everybody say, all of my enemies. Do you want to leave some alive or do you want to just get the little pity patty ones that'll go? I want the big mothers. I want the atmosphere cleared. I don't know, maybe I should have said mother at the church there. But, you know, mother may ever come to me. But anyhow, I don't want to leave anything. I wish I was more refined. It just doesn't work for me. <laughs> but I had an experience in, in thinking about how I felt about Peter and at the, when it hit me in that wave last week, and, and I felt that feeling a long time ago, and I was trying to, and I was sitting there, I said, Lord, what is this about? When I was 16, we rode mini bikes through the woods where currently Ocean Acres is now, and one of my friends hit a cable, and it hit him right around, across the neck and killed him. He was first in line. It could have been any one of us. And he was actually the nicest kid. His name was Danny. Hit him right in the neck and killed him. And I got saved. I wasn't saved. I couldn't go to the funeral. I couldn't go see his family. I, I couldn't deal with it. When I was 19, I got saved. And one of the days I was sitting out in the woods and I just looked up to the Lord. I said, how come it was Danny? Just like I'm sure many of you have said, how come Peter? And audibly, the Lord spoke to me in that situation. And he said, Danny was the only one ready. Yeah. 
So in 2010, my mother, now I was, I hadn't dealt with any of this since I was 19. I'm, I just turned 70. But in 2011, 10, my, I went to my mother's grave because we were having the stone put in. I had to check it. Usually I drive up to the grave. It's a long, narrow graveyard. I drive up and get, and I, I, this time the gate was closed, so I had to walk. And as I'm walking, there's Danny. <laughs> and I stopped. I, I shed tears. I said, Lord, tell Danny I said hi. And I felt so bad. I was so, I was, you know, we get ourselves all whipped up and emotionally. No, he didn't get to get married. He didn't get to have kids like I did. He didn't get to. And then all of a sudden it was like, yeah, but he's in heaven. He ain't upset about anything right now. He's not standing out here in the middle of the graveyard getting all weepy. In fact, he feels bad for you because you've missed out on the last 45 years of what he's been seeing. And I left that graveyard. And this is a God of honest truth. I got it on my phone. I got a text message from a, a, a kid that I graduated with. Danny was a year behind us in Cheryl's class. His name was Pat Kelly. He was a twin. He was in the military out in California. He, for whatever reason, I hadn't had communication with him for 40 years. I, I had asked the Lord to tell Danny hi. He sends me a picture of his little league team, the team picture, and there's Danny standing right on the end. I play, with a big smile on his face. 45 years of nothing. I believe what's going to happen here today is more significant than that. Because even like there was that little bit of a shroud over here that Tricia sensed that we were praying about today. I believe trauma has hit many of you. And you try, look, you're like me. I put on a good face. Hi, hi, I'm good. Good, how are you? I'm dying on the inside, but I got that smiley face on. I'm good. Sometimes we like to hide away with it. But today I want to deal with it and get away with it. Get it out of here. Because God has a destiny for this church. It's a kingdom congregation. We have shifted already from church to kingdom.